everybody, welcome to the shop. Today's project is gonna be a jump boat repair. Now, my good friend Cody Rogers here came to me and said, hey, uh, I found a John boat, right? I found one on Craigslist, uh, you know how that goes. For uh, apparently a really good price, really cheap, but there was uh, one little problem. Had a hole inside. <laughs> now, Cody was kind enough last year when I was at the Bar Z Bash, a large tree fell on the shop and came through the roof. Cody climbed up there for me, sawed most of the tree off, and tarped the roof so that no damage occurred while I was gone. So to repay the favor, I told him, bring the John boat over, I'll be happy to weld it for you. I get a lot of questions about John boats from folks that have purposely knocked the hole in the bottom or accidentally knocked the hole in. John boats present a couple of challenges. The first challenge is gonna be because the boat is in salt water, brackish water, or sometimes muddy water, that gets corrosion and dirt in the crack or in between the crack, and that's very difficult to get out. So we're gonna clean the aluminum. We're gonna clean the aluminum using this wire brush that Cody's holding here. It's a stainless steel wire brush. We wanna make sure that we only use a stainless steel wire brush. If we use a carbon steel wire brush, even if it's a brand new wire brush, small bits of iron oxide can flake off the bristles, get down into the aluminum, and cause problems in our welding process. We're also going to need to clean that aluminum with an aluminum approved grinding wheel. We're going to clean an area all the way around where we're going to weld because we don't want the paint and this, the stuff that they use to coat the aluminum, we don't want to breathe that when it, when it melts and it gets really hot. Also, we're going to clean the that aluminum with acetone. Now acetone is used because it evaporates quickly and it doesn't leave any grease behind. It also uh, dissolves most of all the paint process. In aluminum, they use a two-part acid etchant primer that we absolutely have to make sure we get all of it off of there. The other issue we face with these aluminum John boats is they're very thin. And when you weld very, very thin aluminum, a lot of times the aluminum tends to melt or drip away before we can get a puddle established. So here's how we're going to remedy that. This is a copper bar. It's about uh, 3 eighths or so thick, solid copper. We're going to use that copper to back up the back side of the weld. That copper will do two things. First, it's going to act as a heat sink behind the aluminum and keep any part of that aluminum from getting too hot too fast and dripping away before we can get a puddle formed. Also, should any of that aluminum start to drip or, or run away, aluminum doesn't stick to copper. We can allow that aluminum to cool and then continue our weld. Now, boats can sometimes present a challenge similar to tanks. But let me explain what I mean by that. Think of a bowl in your kitchen. You take the bowl over the sink, you fill it full of water. A boat hull is a lot like a bowl. When we weld, we use argon as a shielding gas to keep the atmosphere away from the molten weld pump. That argon is not poisonous. We can breathe it. It's in the air naturally. However, it is heavier than air and it does displace the oxygen out of the atmosphere. So if we get down inside that boat hull and start welding, we can push away the oxygen that we need to breathe, that we need to survive, and put ourselves in a very dangerous situation and not even realize it because argon has no odor. So the way we're gonna remedy that is we're gonna take that boat hull and either turn it on its side so that the argon hits the floor and dissipates out on the atmosphere naturally, or we're gonna use a fan to change out the air inside the boat hull and allow it to be replaced with fresh oxygen in our atmosphere. So when we're welding, if you hear a fan running and the audio gets a little rough, be patient with us because we're just trying to keep it safe for ourselves. Now, I've started to get this itch to go fishing, so I think we're going to pull the boat here in the shop and try to get that hole welded up. What do you think? I think there's a pond right outside waiting on us. Here's the damage. It's got a split seam. This is a welded seam that's split. Somebody else has tried to make a prior repair. They've tried to drill some holes and looks like maybe back it up with some angle or something. That was removed prior to us getting a hold of it. Here's the inside damage. You see there's the holes that somebody else has drilled all along here and the split goes from about here all the way up the inside. So what we're going to do, we're going to get in here and clean this up real well. Here's the wheel that we're using. It's a, a scotch brite type wheel.
Okay, here's something to take a note of. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but right along the edge of this weld is some paint and stuff that we can't get out with a wheel. This is very, very critical that we get this out of here because what will happen is these bits of paint will liquefy when we weld and they'll float into our weld puddle and uh, it makes a wreck of the, the weld. So we're going to use a stainless steel wire brush. Got to get in there and give it some love. So we've used it, some acetone and a rag, wiped down the whole inside, the outside, the bottom and the inside. And then we took a wire brush and it, it pretty much trashed the brush. We took the brush and we got acetone in here and we scrubbed the inside of this out real well too. About as good as we are gonna be able to get it. I, I suspect that we're still gonna have a bunch of junk in there, but honestly, there's not a whole lot more we can do without just making a gigantic opening here. And I really don't want to do that because I'd like to be able to pull this back to its, uh, its original shape. What we're going to do next, we're going to take a, a furniture clamp. We're going to put a furniture clamp right here. I'm going to try to pull this back together. Just, just hold it. That's all I needed to do is just to hold it. I've got that nice and tight. I'm just going to put a couple of tack welds on here to hold this into position. And then we'll probably reset everything and, and maybe even flip the boat over on its side to, to do this welding. But while I got it right here sitting on the trailer in its position that it'll live in, I want to tack it together. All right, so we've got the machine set at about 250 hertz, around 100 amps. I'm probably not going to need that much, but there is a large area to add heat to. I'm using a 332 tungsten. I'm 75% unbalanced. A 1 16th filler metal here, a 4043. What we're going to do is just put a couple of tack welds right across the bottom just to hold everything in place till we start moving it. All right, here's the setup we're going to use to fill these holes. These are copper bars here. These are just some weights off the kid's uh, tractor. And what I've got them done is just fit up tight here. So when you come along here to the outside, you can see these holes you can see through into the boat. This one here is backed up with a copper bar. And what that's gonna do is it give me a backer to start filling these holes. It'll help control the heat so I don't get a, a lot of heat build up suddenly. It'll also allow me something to put that aluminum back up against without it running out onto the inside. Okay, so far we've been able to weld this without actually getting inside of the boat. And we've got all eight of the holes filled. Now we're gonna weld this seam right here. We'll probably flip the boat over and at least run the torch down it uh, and give it a kind of a double-sided weld, make sure we get through penetration. But I don't suspect we'll have to worry about the argon puddling like we talked about earlier, just because of the, having the ability to do it on the trailer. All right, so here's the finished product. When I got done and I got all the way to the end, I had a real good weld here, but what I did is I just went and lit up on, on it with a torch again and contoured it so that it kind of matched the existing body line here of the boat. Um, wasn't necessary, it was plenty strong, just uh, me being anal. This here is a rivet. These are the actual holes that we filled in the boat. There was a little tiny crack right there. 
we also filled. All right, here's a little shot of the inside. There's a lot of crap in the weld seam that was there, and I didn't want to get in there and grind the old, even though the original weld seam is very small, I didn't want to get in there with a grinder and grind it out and make it too thin and make it very difficult to weld. It's a pretty good weld. It's not the prettiest thing ever, but considering what we're welding over and trying to repair, I'm, I'm very satisfied with it. The rest of this boat will come apart before that spot does. Good as new. Can't beat that for a Craigslist find. All right, well, uh, looks like we've got another project completed here in the shop, and um, I think Cody and I are gonna try to go out there in the pond and check for water tightness and maybe catch a, take a fishing pole or two with us. Hey, sounds like a good idea to me. Well, we'll mark this project as done, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.